guys, I'm Stephanie Weaver and welcome to my studio. Today, what we are going to do is we're going to paint a pretty pink hydrangea. Oh, we're doing it. Okay. So, uh, what this kind of does is uh, we are on the fourth week of creating pretty flowers. So, if you followed me in the last couple weeks, we have painted this pretty calla lily with a little ladybug on it. Super, super cute. And then we've painted these uh, cascading pink flowers and then our purple hydrangea. So I'm going to round it out with a nice pink hydrangea. So, and it's going to go along these lines where it's going to be nice, simple and clean, very pretty. And before we kind of get into our palette, I want to talk to you about some pinks real quick because we're using pinks again. And this painting right here, we used a color called Rose Deep. Now, if you don't have Rose Deep, I want to show you what, uh, what your other options might be. So, what I have here, <laughs> this is a little, you know, two and a half, maybe three inch by three inch panel, and I buy them in bulk. So you can get like 12 for pretty inexpensive. And what I use these for is just to kind of practice and play with the colors to see what color I might want to use on this pink hydrangea. So most of us have a lizard and crimson. That's part of my standard palette. So even if you don't have these other two, you can see what color you're going to be able to achieve just with the lizard and crimson and white, right? But if you have Quidocrito and Magenta, which is another really pretty pink, and it mixed really, really well with like a cobalt teal to make a gorgeous purple. But anyway, so if you've got that, you can kind of see the variations of pink that you can get with that. Then uh, Rose Deep. Rose Deep is what I used in the cascading pink flowers along with some alizarin and crimson. And so you can see you can get some pretty pink with that. Now, these colors, they range in price and that might be your factor and your decision on which one you want to go with. I can tell you this Rose Deep, this little thing right here, this one is Old Holland brand, and I believe this little one is on sale now. <laughs> and it's on sale for like 50 something bucks. So normally about 70 something bucks. So this is a very kind of coveted, <laughs> expensive color, and it's not something that you can actually make like yourself and mix and stuff. So if you want to achieve that kind of pink right there, you, unfortunately you do have to buy it. So, very pretty, and I also will say, you can see that this paint has been, I mean this, this tube has seen some damage, right? So I've had this color for at least 18 years, and I don't use it a lot, and it's not because of the price that I don't use it, it's because I oftentimes don't have a need for that color. So, um, you know, unless you're going to paint a ton of flowers, um, you, you don't necessarily need to buy this. So the, on the other hand, the Guadalcado Magenta, I believe this is maybe like, you know, it's under the $20 mark. So, and this one I've had for a couple years now. So it's something that will last you a while and you can definitely, you know, get your, you know, get the biggest bang for the buck if that you're looking for that type of thing. <sighs> so. What I'm going to use today is actually this Quidocrito Magenta. I'm kind of drawn to that level of pink, and I know I'm going to want it to be a lot pinker than that. Now, hydrangeas are one of my favorite color, favorite flowers, so um, when they're pink like this, and little hints of blue, it's just my favorite. So, you choose what level of pink that you want and what you like, because this is your flower, right? Okay. Now, I do have mine already pre-drawn. If you don't like to draw your own, don't sweat that either. If you go over on the link that I provided, or if you look inside this tutorial, there is reference documentation that uh, includes a sketch that you can use. So I'm gonna sit down here for a second. I'm actually a little too close All right, to my camera. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. So I am, like in the previous paintings, I am actually sitting down for this because I'm going to have it in my lap. And as I said in the previous ones, this is not something I normally do. Normally, it's up on the easel, but because I'm keeping it like super controlled and I don't want to go outside of the white into the white area, 
and then I'm going to keep it right here so I can pivot it and change it around and everything. Okie dokie. So, the other thing to note is I do have my standard palette out. So, um, except for black, I know I'm not going to need black today. So, um, what I have is my ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, sap green, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, burnt sienna, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, and cadmium medium yellow. And then, of course, my white. And I'm going to go ahead and add in my quadrophodil magenta along the side over here. A little goes a long way. And even if you don't use it all, you can always stick your glass palette into the freezer or refrigerator. It, and it'll keep for a while. And I dropped my lid. See, live, unedited. So, these little suckers sometimes just really don't want to go on. There it goes. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. Now, I am going to go ahead and mix a medium pinky color. I'm going to take a little bit of my Quadacarone and Magenta and some white. Look how pretty that yard pink is. You guys know I do a ton of pet portraits and I don't often get to use pink. If I do, it's mostly like, you know, in their nose or the tongue or the collars. So I like pink. Pink's pretty. Okay, so now, if you'll notice that my drawing here, all I did was really kind of draw the outline. I didn't really identify where I want every single little petal in there because I'm going to make that up as I go. But there's one important thing to note on a reference image here. So if you notice, let's do a little bit of comparison here. So if I look at this leaf, the leaf is about like this big, right? And there's probably about six, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, probably six or seven like little flowers that are in there. So what we need to keep in mind is these flowers, the individual flowers that make up the whole hydrangea are small. So we don't need to make them ginormous like a leaf, like the half size of the leaf. They need to be probably about a quarter, you know, size of the leaf. Okay. I'm going to dip my brush in my hand saw and just kind of get it wet and move the paint around. And I am essentially just going to block in all the pink. And I'm going to mix up just a little bit of a hybrid mix there so I can start pulling in all these different colors. And I am just making little push marks. And I might pull in some darker pink over in here. I know this is going to be the dark side. So you can see like there's a dark side here, dark side, dark side. So if I start pulling in a little bit of that dark side, and I'm going to add some Neil McGilp into it just to make it move a little easier. There we go. And I'm moving my brush stroke in multiple directions. Because what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to use these brush strokes to identify where my flowers are, the individual petals. Do you have a little leaf kind of coming out there? I'm going to try not to touch that too much.
I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna add a little bit more white because as I go over this way, it's going to become lighter. And I haven't really cleaned off my brush all that much, so I'm just adding more color. Just Maybe I'll come down in here. Make it a little less pom pom y looking. And add in a little bit more depth in some spots by adding a little bit more dark. Now, you don't necessarily see this in the picture itself, but um, if you add a little bit of the ultramarine blue to your cuadrado magenta, look at that pretty little purple there. And I'm gonna add some splashes of purple into this just to deepen it up just a little bit. Look at that. Just a little bit of difference, a little bit of variation. Just to change it up just a teeny tiny bit. Okay. Okay. Now, I've got a nice big pom pom thing happening right now. So I'm going to go in and start defining where I want to actually be able to see flowers so I can recognize that it's not just a pom-pom, it is a hydrangea. So I'm going to pull out some color. And so I'm taking a smaller brush and I'm going to clean it off just a bit. And I've got a paper towel ready. And so I'm gonna pull out some centers. So I might have a little Center of a flower there. And maybe one that's kind of peeking through right here. Because I kind of see some petals, and that's what I'm looking for is where I might see some flowers. So maybe one's kind of going that way over here. See what I'm doing there? Okay, so now I'm going to actually start calling out some highlights. So I am going to be adding a lot more white. So what I'm looking for are where I see some petals. So we know that we're going to have center here. So maybe I can pull some of this in. Just like that. So a little flower here. I'm not going to be, see, be able to see the whole flower. Okay. And I'm going to add some white up into here. This is where the, the sun is hitting it the most. And this little guy's calling out to me right there. I'll bring him out. I'm going to add a touch of this little blue to this white because the sky is reflecting off the white and so it's going to be bringing in some of the blue. Okay. 
there's gonna be little ones that are just trying to so 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 all you see is like the, the edge of it just peeking out okay I'm gonna add in some darks so I can start calling them out just a little bit better so I'm gonna grab some of the quadrupedal magenta and let's see, I see the flower right over here. Start creating some depth in it. I'm just kind of softening the edge just a little bit on some of these and blending in the lower part of the line. So like what I mean there is, so let's see if I add this little line right here. It's making a hard edge on this petal, but then I want to soften it into the background. I can also create some nice hard edges using the white. And it's going to automatically pink up because it's picking up some of the, the pink that's already on there. So I don't have to worry about pre-mixing my color all the time.
myself on that edge that's down here. So my blob is taking a lot more of a shape and I'm starting to see individual flowers. And I'll probably add just a touch of yellow and white. And I'll grab some of the cadmium medium yellow. And then I'm going to add a little indications of those, just a little bit of little bits of sunshine every now and then. Okay, now I'm going to add in some darks, grabbing some of the quadrocodone magenta, a little bit of the ultramarine blue mixture, and just kind of put a little bit under some of these highlights so they come out, just pop out a little bit more. So if you notice the other thing I'm doing, I'm not really looking at my reference image anymore. Um, I'm kind of making it up as I go because not all hydrangeas look just like that picture. So I don't really have to worry about making it look just like that picture. But what I'm thinking about now is like, I'm looking at the highlights and maybe just add a little touch of a shadow underneath them so that the highlight pops out and looks a little more realistic. And I'm not putting a shadow underneath the total petal, only certain spots. So like I've got like a little bit of a hard edge here and then another one over here. And that makes it look more realistic because stuff is going to disappear into the background that they're not going to be able to see all that well.
really what we're doing right now. This is about how I do trees as well. So I start off with a ginormous blob of like a medium tone of green and then start defining the lights and the darks. And then after that, then I add in like the limbs because you're not going to be able to see every single limb. Same thing here, you're not going to be able to see every single little um, center. You're not going to be able to see every single completion of a petal. I'm going to probably come back to that. I'm going to work on this, uh, the greenery now. So, taking some of my sap green and some of my yellow ochre. I'm going to make a green and then pull up the picture again. Okay, well, that's probably a good shade to start out with. I'll make a little bit more of it. some of the green and I'm going to start on this one right here. And I'm going to be a little bit careful not to touch the pink. Actually, lift off some of the color. Taking my Gamsol and just lifting off some of the color. Okay, and that creates a nice little highlight. I'm just moving my brush in the direction of the veins. And then I might add a little bit of white to my brush. I'm going to pull that right underneath. There we go. I'm going to do the same to my other leaves. I've got this one right here. off some paint again to create the highlight. Okay. 
I'm going to take a smaller brush, a small dry brush, and I'm going to dry some of that paint that's from the highlight into the darker area. And then just create a, the fold part of it. Okay. I'm gonna pull off some paint to create the highlights that are underneath it like the sun and shining through the leaf. So I'm just dragging the wet paint and lifting it off. Create that highlight. Take my dry brush. And I'm gonna create little subtle transitions just by Gently blending the ends in. Create that vein. Underneath. So then what we're going to do is take a darker green. And put it right underneath here. I'm going to add a little bit of Gamsol. The Gamsol is going to help it move create more of a smooth line. So I've got my sap green, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and some burnt umber. Create a nice dark green. Pulling that color up into the other leaf to accentuate the highlight. Pulling it into this leaf. A little bit more dark. Pulling up. I'm going to add in the little leaf that's right here. And then this other one that's up here.
I'm going to lift off some paint to give that leaf some structure. So it's got like a part that comes up right there. Maybe I'll just pull it out just a little. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into my flower. I'm not done because I want to make sure that everything is kind of popping and coming forward and then um, has, you know, it has depth. It's got to have some depth. So to get depth, you got to mess with the, the lights and the darks. So I'm going to go back and forth and work the lights and the darks. I'm going to grab some Elizabeth and Crimson to bring the Quadrophodon Magenta a little bit cooler and some Dolce Blue a little bit cooler. See how much depth that already added? Like it put the underneath the flower. And pulling some of that pink down into the green. To make it a little bit more interesting of a color than just straight up green. So as you see, I deviated quite a bit from my original picture. It's a reference image. I'm just using it because it gave me inspiration to create this pretty hydrangea. Switch into the light. What I'm doing is basically I've got two paintbrushes in my hand. One that I'm using for the dark, another one I'm using for the light. The only reason why that I'm doing this is so that I can quickly switch back and forth. Normally I don't do that. Normally I will actually, you know, clean my brush and switch. And but I want to be able to quickly move on what I see and act on it. got a little bit of green in it, so I didn't like that. I had to 
coming off my brush. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in my little centers. Grab some of that yellow and white mix. Let's see, I know I've got a center here. And then in here, I'll throw some white. Maybe not. Grab some of my green. Notice I didn't really wash off wash off my brush. That green and the pink mixed together is gonna make a nice color. Just kind of deepen it a little bit. Okay, let's see. So it's nice and loose. I'm going to add a little bit of green into here. And I'm going to try and create that. The edges that the leaves have on them.
There's so many things that you can do with them. But I'm pretty happy with this. It's a nice loose painting. You know it's a hydrangea. It's got some good colors to it, good depth. I got a little bit of a highlight to my stem here. today's little painting about a pink hydrangea and I encourage you to go back and paint the other ones if you haven't done so already and then also just paint it again and again try those different color pinks try a different color green see what you come up with because you're gonna see colors completely different than I am and that's totally fine and totally expected because we all have different combs and rods and the number of them in our eyes so I encourage you to play and, and do something different than what I did and you know have fun with it so until next time stay safe happy and healthy see you guys soon